So you went down to Los Angeles in the summer of 88 and you were playing with your direct feed Constant Air PGP and what fields were you playing at? We had a booth out of Warzone, so Warzone was a common place we'd play. Preferred Sat Kong Village, SC Village. Mm -hmm. What about field games? Uh, we didn't play much at field games a couple times, uh -huh. but you know, once you're at SC Village with the way they have their Vietnam village set up and the bunkers and the sandbags uh -huh. and the amount of people that are there, yeah. you know, field games. We go there occasionally, but SC was the one that we loved to, to play at, just the atmosphere. You were playing at those fields, and how do you feel your equipment stacked up against your opponents at that time? PGP was fine. You know, not, not like the first time I played where I shot three times and got annihilated. We held our own and more. Uh -huh. uh, I'd have friends from up here go down on weekends. Yeah. So there'd be three of us go out to the fields, and we two of us would have PGPs, and one had a, a regular rifle. Uh -huh. But we'd just go out and just have a great day. Yeah. No matter which side we were on, we'd win. So you were competing against a lot of direct feed pumps, and your PGP was direct feed. Yes. Uh, you had the, probably the PK-45 adapter maybe coming out the back of it. Oh, yeah, it came straight out the back, yes. There were a lot of Nelsons that were kind of coming onto the scene. Was Tasso offering a Nelson at that time? Yes. My first experience with the Nelsons was I had to go up to Sigma Machine to go pick up some barrels. So first time up there out of high school, basically. A little bit of, little bit of college behind me. They sent me to go pick up uh, 20, 30 barrels or something. So they go up there and I, I go up there to pick this up. They give me a blank check with the signature on there. So they give me some price, like 120 or 60. And I'm just, I write a check out for $60 for all these barrels. And it was supposed to be like 6,000 or something. It was just, I was off by three decimals, just the terminology. So my first experience with Nelson's wasn't good. And that might have been why I never, I, I, I didn't like the Nelsons. I didn't like that breech drop. Um, I saw too many balls being broken as they were pumping them. Jams, issues. And I remember just the parts were really rough. And so the barrels that you were picking up were most likely Devastator barrels. They were. They were one-piece barrel and breech assemblies. They weren't breech threaded drop. together yet. Balls. Yeah, and it was breech drop, yes. So AGS was selling a lot of upgrades at the time. They were selling the Devastator breech drop Nelson kit that you just put right onto your Nelson. Number right, seven. yes. And they also were selling a lot of Sheridan accessories and they were having, or one of the AGS employees actually convert Sheridan rifles into semi-automatics. Yes. That was also around summer of 1988. I would say the 88 yeah. is when those were produced. Yeah, and what did you think about those when you saw them? I had to have one of those. Going from a PGP and seeing all these Nelson guns, for some reason, I just want to take that extra step and go a little further. Uh -huh. So I fell in love with that, set up a deal with uh, Matt. I don't think I even talked to David about it. David might have been mad. But I set up a deal with Matt to uh, pick one of these up and put it on payment. They just take it out of my paycheck every, every week. And, yeah, so they gave one to me. And I was kind of like... I'd come back every week and have to report on how it did or what issues there were, trying to fine tune it as much as possible, talk to the gun tech. Uh -huh. uh, that was what I was supposed to do. So it was kind of like a little bit of R&D along with the rifle. Yeah, yeah. Give them yeah. some feedback, how it performed, what the yeah. issues were. They were slowly making them. They had them advertised, but maybe by the time the advertisements came out, they weren't even producing them anymore. What do you think? I want to say they were made to order. So when you ordered them, yeah. we I, we might have had one or two pre-made yeah. um, on the wall. On the wall. Was, was that in Bellflower? Or? That was in Bellflower, yes. Yeah. Was yeah. that where the actual AGS store was? Yeah, yes. Or one of the stores? That was, was one of the stores. There was also the store in Van Nuys? Van Nuys, yes. Okay. I worked up there for a little bit as well. So there was probably, it was a very low production semi-automatic. Had you seen any other semi-automatics at the time when you saw this? SMG 60 was about the only one I could think of. Mm -hmm. with Any the other direct feed semi-automatics? At that time, no. No, this was, it was either this or the SMG 60. Mm -hmm. And the SMG 60 was either a full auto or, I think that's the only, you had to order either full auto or, or semi. Yeah. Most fields were only allowing semi. So in LA, everything was just semi. And there were some double actions coming out also, like the Rapheed was probably was coming out. Yeah, that was in that area. Uh-huh. 
you know, it was also like right in the middle of 88. But this was definitely the first direct feed semi-automatic that you saw. Yes, pneumatically operated semi, that was a true semi uh -huh. uh, that had direct feed, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and probably less issues than any other semi on the market. Yeah, so how did it work? It worked great. I remember played a lot at, at Conquest with Dave Bassman, Sudden Death, played against Sudden Death quite a bit, Crib Death. And I remember playing against John Barber. I had Dave Bassman, I was running with Dave Bassman up through the town. Town was set up, it was an A-team set, a little South American village. So Bassman and I are working up one side of the village, and he goes, just right there, just lay down paint right there. Couldn't see anything, but he knew where all his players would go. So I just start ripping, and John Barber, I want to say his name was John Barber. Yeah. He just came unglued. He came out flipping, uh, just screaming about how no snowfall autos allowed on the field. And Bass was right behind me just laughing because it's not a, it wasn't a full auto. It was a semi. It was just very, very responsive compared to the pump guns back in those days. So it performed real well. It was accurate, quick. I don't know about how efficient it was. Because I remember air spitting out of everywhere when you pulled this trigger. But it was a lot of fun and put a lot of terror into people's huh. reaction when they saw it. So you don't remember who actually was building them at AGS, but it was kind of a longtime AGS employee. It was. He was there when I got there, and he was there until just before David and Matt split. Uh -huh. So he was there till probably probably ninety. Yeah. Probably ninety. Yeah. And do you think you used this rifle up until around ninety? When do you, how long do you think you used it for? Myself. Yeah. I probably used this until 90, then I jumped into the Vindicator line that we produced. So is it missing some parts right now? Yeah, this is the bolts missing. Got a bolt and a ram that was on the top. Yeah. Got a little sleeve back here where I held the extra bolt pins, because those would have a tendency to, to bend or even shear during a, a game. Yeah. And I want to say I had a couple different types. I think I had different hardness they wanted me to test out, uh -huh. so... You know, the hardened ones would just shear. Yeah. The stock ones would kind of just bend a little uh -huh. and then eventually break uh, or i just replace them. Uh -huh. I'm just trying to remember how this was set up. I want to say this was over the top. And there's another one that came the back way. Mm -hmm. Just trying to picture of, of how this was. But yeah, I, know, I remember it was, it was heavy. This uh -huh. is not a light gun. Yeah, the one thing Randy Camilla said is he remembered you specifically with that gun. And he said... John was a big guy, so for him it wasn't really a problem to to lug it around. But anyone else going out and playing all day with that is yeah, I was I was fit back then. Yeah, yeah, I was able to. Uh, I had good stamina and good muscle build. I was able to lug this around through the through the heat and the different uh -huh. terrain. Awesome, it was fun. <laughs>